Thank you. Oh, sorry. Good afternoon again. Thank you for joining for this uh, very important conversation. The issue of translational repression and the effects of targeting of uh, vulnerable dissidents, including those from religious uh, minority communities worldwide, continues to be a concern for international community with enormous implication for uh, freedom of uh, religion as a whole. Recently, Freedom House released a groundbreaking report entitled Defending Democracy in Exile, uh, Understanding and Responding to Transnational Repression. We are honored to be joined by Ms. Annie Boyajian. Annie is the Vice President for Policy and Advocacy at Freedom House and uh, leads their engagement with US government and uh, human rights organizations. She has a background working on Capitol Hill uh, and her insight on foreign policy and human rights have proved invaluable. Thank you, Annie. In no case uh, has translational repression been more clearly illustrated than in that of the Chinese Communist Party's targeting Uyghur dissidents abroad. We are privileged to have Mr. Dolkun Esa, the president of the uh, World Uyghur Congress. Dolkun's own experience of being targeted through manipulated Interpol red notes and beyond, as well as his experience with uh, the Uyghur diaspora community will provide valuable insights into the lens that perpetrators will go to pursue, harass, and silence dissent even in foreign soil. Finally, we, have, uh, uh, we are also honored to be joined by Andrew Stafford of the US State Department, Department of uh, Democracy, Labor, and Human Rights. Andrew works in the Office of Security and Human Rights, uh, where he leads uh, the, the Bureau on issues of global transnational repression. The United States government uh, has recently taken action to address the growing threat of transnational repression through resources on reporting incidents, to visa bans on perpetrators, and most recently, under Secretary Uzra Zia and uh, Department Homeland Security uh, from uh, Homeland Security, Serena Hoy testified for a CCC hearing on US government's efforts to address the problem. It is very clear that much remains to be done. I would like to start the conversation by framing the problem before we go into, the, uh, into what potential solution might be, I would like to begin by asking Annie to frame the problem for us. Uh, Annie, can you tell us the definition of transnational repression and the serious implications that this issue has for religious of freedom? Sure, thanks, and thanks so much. It's an honor to be with all of you. And I'm cognizant of the fact that I am standing between you all and food, so we'll stick to time for our panel. So very simply, transnational repression is when governments reach beyond their borders to silence dissent. This can take physical form, assassination, abduction. Jamal Khashoggi is a famous example. Um, but it also can be, and often is, threatening messages on social media, threatening phone calls, threats to family members. We tracked, since 2014, 735 incidents of physical transnational repression. Some of those non-physical cases are harder to track, and so we don't have those in the database that we have. Of those 735 cases, the Chinese government has perpetrated at least 239, um, and they do conduct the most comprehensive, sophisticated campaign of transnational repression. 
we also see a lot of misconception that transnational oppression only happens in countries with weak rule of law, but in fact it happens in democracies right here in the United States and elsewhere. And I know some of my panelists can also talk about that. Thank you, Annie. Dolkun, what uh, can you tell us about your own experience with the efforts of the Chinese government to, in, uh, to exert such type of uh, repression against yourself and other Uyghurs in diaspora. Thank you, Omar. So, and uh, we know, and the Chinese government use all opportunity, every opportunity, use different of way repressions of Uyghur activists, Tibet activists, and the other Hong Kongs, and the, even the Chinese activists as well. They use uh, diplomatic channel, and also use economic power, uh, and the advantage of the technology, several system technology, and also same time use a classic way in person spy network, and also hostage policy. So uh, China use also international legal system. For example, Interpol use misuse the Interpol to targeted Uyghur activists. I'm the one of them. Uh, Chinese government put my name to the Interpol red notes. I had red notes 21 years. Within 21 years, I had faced a lot of problem and uh, I was deported more than 10 countries so far. Even 2006, first time, after I got to the German citizen, when I arrived to the International Dallas Airport, Washington, I was detained 23 hours, and I was deported to Germany, you know? So, until 2012, more than six years, I could not enter, because of the Chinese long arm, because of the Chinese separation. So finally, 2012, I got a visa, no, I'm here, I'm happy, thanks for the God, thanks for the US justice system, and this time I enter the VIP channel. This is a big difference, I'm so happy. But, and uh, uh, not only this, this example, 2008, when I was uh, uh, in the South Korea, I was invited to one of the international human rights conference in the uh, South Korea, Seoul. I was detained in Seoul, Seoul, Seoul airport. More than four days, I had faced deported to China. Finally, and the diplomatic uh, pressure from Germany, from United States, some of the European country. It is very last minute I was deported to Germany, not China. So this is the example. Even such kind of uh, uh, repression was happening in the middle of Europe. I'm the citizen of Europe. In 2017, when I was in the room, I was invited Senator Campagni for the joint press conference in the Italian Senate, just 20 minutes before starting the press conference, more than 20 Italian police. And they arrested me, they detained me uh, to the police uh, station. Uh, however, Germany uh, protests German ambassador in, in the room, asking that we never recognize the red notes, and this is a political issue. I was released, but however, Italian police took my fingerprint, took my picture, like treat me as a criminal. You know, so today I cannot enter quite a lot of country. I cannot travel. I have a travel ban. Uh, this is my case, of course, a little bit special, but it's not unique. Quite a lot of Uyghur activists, and they have a similar problem today. And there's quite a lot of country, neighboring country, extradited Uyghur refugees to, to, to China. And that being we were activists, uh, being activists is not easy, but being we were activists, it is really, really, really difficult. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dolkun. Andrew, can you tell us about the US government's uh, response to these problems? Uh, how we might reach a common definition of transnational oppression and what we might do to mobilize a more effective response internationally? Uh, absolutely, and thank you for letting me be here today. So first of all, I want to reiterate that the U.S. government's response is a whole of government response. We are using both state as well as our other interagencies, our partners at commerce, our partners at justice and the FBI. 
we are coordinated, we are talking to each other, and we are sharing information so that it is a whole government response using everything that we have as part of the U.S. government to counter this issue. Um, secondly, I'm going to say that it's an agile response. We are responding to these threats. This is one of the most, transnational repression is one of the most serious threats that we've seen. It is very technically, technologically advanced, and it's also very much unadvanced at the same time. It can take many forms, so we have to be very quick and respond in real time um, to these threats. And Thank you, Andrew. Uh, in light of these efforts, what do you think should be done in, the, uh, in furtherance of the aims to ensure the United States and other countries reduce this threat and ensure an environment of safety, especially for victims of persecution? How might we mobilize our response? Any, will you start with your thoughts? Freedom House has had a very wonderful suggestion, policy suggestion in its last report. Sure, well, I think it's exactly right that we need to limit the ability of perpetrators to commit transnational repression, and we also need to work to protect potential victims and support them after the fact. So we have tracked 36 governments engaging in transnational repression, part of this intensifying trend we've seen of uh, worsening repression globally. And one important first step would be to codify a definition of what transnational repression is. The FBI, as you mentioned, Andrew, has been doing some excellent work, and they actually have a resource page where there's a definition um, built from Freedom House reports. Um, before you can address transnational repression, you need to understand what it is. And so governments need to be training folks and officials who may come in contact with it how to recognize it so that folks like Mr. Isa don't end up trapped with false uh, red notices that get you deported unfairly. We need to make sure that we're providing resources and doing community outreach and working multilaterally because these authoritarians are outsmarting us and they're working together to misuse our own democratic systems and so we need to stay a step ahead. Thank you, Annie. Uh, would you like to share your thoughts? Yes, yeah, so uh, unfortunately today, uh, quite a lot of countries, uh, even some European countries, have a special uh, agreement with China extraditions. Yeah. So people and the activists on China saying is of course this criminal extradition, but on the Chinese government eyes, every activist, Tibet activists, every and, the, and the, even the, the Hong Kong's activists is criminal today. So that's why this kind of agreement must be cancelled today. You know, and the, secondly, my advice. Uh, international, uh, uh, like Interpol, even the UN Human Rights Council, uh, and UN system must be reformed. Other way today, China use economic power to uh, uh, to uh, manipulate the whole uh, system. Because I already told my story, and there is a several other story. Today, also several Uyghur refugees and uh, had under face to the deport to China. Now is for. We were refugees in the uh, uh, had been faced in this Saudi Arabia, and um, one one we were uh, activist refugees in the Morocco more than one yes. So that's why this is China all the time uses the, uh, misuse Interpol, then then the use advantage and uh, uh, make pressure. That's why uh, UN system must be reformed, and the Interpol also must be reformed. International system must be reformed, and the bilateral uh, uh, agreement is must be cancelled. Yes. Thank you, Tolkun. Yes, Andrew, do you have anything to share with us? Oh, absolutely. I would, open. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but I would like to share that we need to continue our efforts to engage like-minded countries and like-minded partners in our efforts to prevent transnational oppression. This includes information sharing of cases. This includes uh, sharing our best practices, and this includes getting law enforcement agencies to talk to each other so that we can identify these issues early and address them early as well. Um, and also we need to expand our support for, continue our support uh, for victims of transnational oppression, as Annie mentioned earlier, and to help these people and their families um, show that PRC transnational oppression doesn't end there. And it's not an end all, we can get them back. Uh, and lastly, uh, I want to say that we need to... Oh, sorry. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, the uh, transnational repression, of course, is a very broad issue, but uh, we have very limited time. Uh, thank you for the uh, speakers. 
So thank you for all uh, joining us to discuss this sobering issue. I would like to close by taking a moment to recognize the brave survivors, Uyghur survivors, who are with us here today. <laughs> Their bravery in the face of odds like these inspire us all. Thank you. Thank you for your bravery. Yeah. These four Uyghur uh, women survivors, we are grateful for your bravery. Thank you so much to expose the Chinese atrocities in this uh, concentration camps. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, I would uh, invite our audience to continue to engage with this issue. You can visit UHRP website at uhrp.org and see our report, Beyond Silence, which discusses the collaboration between Arab countries in China in translational repression of Uyghurs. You can also visit freedomhouse.org to read their report, Defending Democracy in Exile, Understanding in Responding to Transnational Repression. And we encourage you to follow along with FBI and DHS as they develop resources in response. Finally, please come alongside those vulnerable people, including Uyghurs in the United States, as they continue to face acts of repression by authoritarian regimes even here in our community. We look forward to seeing a continued growing global response. Thank you so much. Thank you.